It's always a delight for us to have one of our missionaries in town, and we have had a wonderful missions conference weekend so far. Brother Yoon, it's been good to get to know you. We've had a great time, and uh, I discovered that he actually graduated from Pensacola Christian College around the time that some of my older children were there. So that is exciting. He's a good man. <laughs> so if you didn't come to the missions dinner last night, you missed a tremendous video presentation, a slide presentation of all the work that they're doing at the Bible College of East Africa. Be in prayer for him, for his wife, for his three children, whose names I will not try to pronounce. But they are good names. He can tell you what they mean. They have biblical meaning, just like his name has biblical meaning. And so it's with joy we welcome to our pulpit today, Reverend Evan Yoon. Brother Yoon, come and preach the word. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is my joy, it is my privilege to deliver the Word of God, especially in this beautiful Lord's Day morning. As it has been introduced, my name is Eben Yoon. I'm a missionary. The Lord has called me in 1990 um, through the servant of the Lord, late Dr. Lynn Gray Golden. He has visited my church and he spoke the Word of God. I mean, those days, my English was not, I mean, still today I have problem with English, but I could not, I did not really understand what he said in English. But with a translator, he delivered the words like, there are so many people who are dying without knowing Jesus Christ. What have you done? And that really spoke to my heart, and I dedicated my life to the Lord. And from 1999, 93, from 1999, 1990, I have prayed to be a missionary, and the Lord answered my prayer in 2005, and from 2005 until last year, 2015, before the follow, and the Lord has given me the opportunity, or rather privilege, to serve the Lord as a missionary in Kenya, and Kenya, and Rwanda, and also in Tanzania. And the Lord is extending His ministry. And we have the we have Bible College of East Africa, and also we have church, we have a kindergarten, and we have the secondary school, and we have the church outside of the campus. And the Lord is continually using many different people from many different tribes, so that we may use as His instrument, and that we may experience the extension of God's kingdom through the ministry. I just want to say thank you all for your prayer. I believe prayer is, um, has great power. And we believe that you know there are so many testimonies we have, not because we have done so good, but it is God's grace and through the prayer of saints. And may you continue. I, mean, I really request your prayer so that you may or we may continually serve the Lord in the mission field. And I believe if the Lord is willing, if we have another have the, another fellowship in the future time, I believe we may bring more testimony so that you may be blessed for God's works in Africa. I do have one wife. In Africa, by the way, we are already introducing that I have one wife because you know the cultural thing. There are more than many many have more than one wife. And her name is Mijong Hyun, and we have been married for last um, last 14 years. This is our 14th year. And we are thankful, I am thankful that how the Lord um, fulfilled the needs in my life so that we may have a great, um, joyful time in Kenya. And Lord, Lord also has given us three children. And those are, their names are Korean. First one is Ha-eun, Ha-jin, and Ha-hyun. Right? And um, the, it has meaning, Ha means actually representing God. And the Eun for first one, Ha-eun means grace of God. Second one is Hajin, which means representing the truth of God, and Hayan representing the manifestation of God. So grace and truth manifested, and that's the how we are praying in our family, so that we may um, see more works of God um, throughout our life. Today we want to meditate the Word of God from Gospel of, Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, and before the meditation, let us pray. 
Our gracious Heavenly Father, once again we thank Thee for this special time of meditation. Once again, Father, may You speak to us through this meditation and may You cleanse us so that we may be worthy to listen Your holy words. Father, may You bless this hour of meditation and give us the um, righteous, give us the instructions so that we may live um, in the ways of righteousness on this earth. We commit this hour in your hand, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, um, actually, our my text will be verse 7 to verse 10, but we can go back to verse 5. The apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. Probably the issue for the many of disciples, faith was some kind of, you know, major matter for them. And they probably thought, I don't know, but probably they thought, um, you know, maybe faith, having more faith may bring them more prosperity, or maybe having more faith will, would give them a more um, com confidence for salvation. But verse 6, And the Lord said, If ye have faith as a grain of mercy seed, ye might say unto this um, sycamore tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. Jesus did not answer their request or their questions. But Jesus simply say, when you have faith, this is what happened. Then verse 7 and verse 10, he changed the topic. But anyway, actually he's not changing the topic over here. He's actually answering their question with a maybe more practical perspective. Our issue is not how to increase our faith. Our issue is how to live in this world as a servant of the Lord. Whenever we pray, we are saying the Lord and Lord. If our God is our master, that means you and I, we are the servant of the Lord. When we accept Jesus Christ as our personal savior, our God become our master and we are his servant. And that is the matter we should consider in our life. And, the, and Jesus was speaking to us. This is the way, we, this is the attitude you should have on this earth. And he began to say, But which of you, verse 7, having a servant prolonged of feet, cattle, will say unto him, By and by, when he is come from the field, go and sit down to meet and will not rather say unto him, Make ready wherewith I may soup and gird thyself, and serve me, till I have eaten and drunk, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Does he thank the servant, because he did the things that were committed to him? I trow not. So likewise, ye, when ye ha we shall have done all those things which are committed to you, say, We are unprofitable servant, we have done that which was our duty to do. It is interesting, Jesus did not say, okay, you will have a lot of great things on this earth when you have faith. But Jesus was simply saying, you know, this is what you're supposed to do. And ironically, in verse 10, he says, you are unprofitable servant. Today, many people go to the church for many different reasons. And they may, many, many people go to church, so they may become rich, or they may become the healthier, they must be restored, they may be healed, and they want to have something from, maybe from the blessing of God. But you know, they want the same thing if you go to Buddhist temple, and if you go to the Muslims, they are, they are seeking the same thing. Our God, our, our Lord Jesus Christ told us, what is totally different when you compare with other religion out there? Jesus simply say, you listen to the Master, and you do what Master asks you to do, and realize that, that you are unprofitable servant. Maybe, just, maybe let me just give you the conclusion first. Jesus was saying to us, you listen to the Word of God. And actually, you know, Bible says, faith is coming from hearing. You are asking me how to increase your faith. You listen the word of God. And not only listen the word of God, but be a doer of the word of God. Do what Jesus asks you to do. Do what Master asks you to do. And always have a humble attitude. 
Lord, I'm just privileged to serve you. And I'm just unprofitable. And that is what the, the lesson Jesus is speaking to us today. I believe all of you may know Jesus Christ. And I hope most of you believe Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And I, I prefer maybe this message is for those who believe Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Perhaps if anybody who do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I really challenge you to believe Jesus Christ because the life will be different. And you should not, you know, I'm not guarantee you that your life will be better with the worldliness or materialism, but your life will be better in our Lord Jesus Christ. The scripture has told us that many, many of God's people were called as servant of the Lord. We know that Moses was servant of the Lord. We know Isaac and Jacob were called as servant of the Lord. We know Caleb and Samson and Samuel, they were all called by the servant of the Lord. David was servant of the Lord. Isaiah was servant of the Lord. And Paul was servant of the Lord. Everybody were servant of the Lord. But do you realize that, you know, you are also servant of the Lord. I am also servant of the Lord. When I was young, I realized, I thought the servant of the Lord, the title of servant of the Lord should give to the pastors only, to preachers only. But I realized that since we are calling our God as our master, we are all servants of the Lord. So what Jesus Christ is speaking to us today is actually applicable for all of us. And you know, servant of the Lord is not some title which we should boast with. It is rather a very humble title that I don't have any right, I don't have any possessions, I don't have such a good ability, but I am just following what my master is doing, what my master is asking. And that is a humble title we should have on this earth. Let's go back to our text, verse 7 and verse 8. Let me read one more time. But which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say unto him by and by, when he's come from the field, go and sit down to meet? And will not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may soup and go thyself and serve me, till I have eaten and drunk, drunken, and afterwards thou shalt eat and drink. Do you know that every servant must be ready to listen the voice of master? You know, something sometimes says, okay, I attend the church, so Sunday, maybe the Lord's Day is a, just enough day for me to listen to the word of God. But let me, you know, let me do whatever I want to do all from Monday to Saturday. No, Bible is saying that whether you are in the field or not, whether you are in the church or not, you must be ready to listen what our master is want to know in our life. Not only the, maybe not only the in Luke, but from the Genesis all the way. God has spoken to us. Today He is speaking to us through His Word. And He wants us to know about His Word. So we must be ready to listen. And when God is speaking to us through the Word of God, through the preacher, maybe through the various ways, we should be ready to listen God's Holy Word. Then um, in verse, in, in the, then with the second point, I want you to remember is that when servant listen the word of master, he have responsibility to do what his master ask you, ask him to do. Yes, the servant must be very tired from the field, but he cannot take a rest because he must do what master ask him to do. He must have his own own task, his own family. He must have his own house or own ways. But the word of the master is more important than his own life. Many times we say we love the word of God. We say our God is great. And we believe, I mean, we, we say that we believe that our God, the word of God is most important thing in our life. But in our practical life, sometimes the word of God is secondary. And my own knowledge, my own experience, my own task become the primary in our life. What is our priority? Our priority is to serve the Lord according to what He asks us to do. So let us be ready to serve the Lord, not only listening His words, but let us be a doer of His words. But the verse 9 to 10, the Bible did not stop, but Jesus says, He is unprofitable. And these words many times discourage me many times. 
I thought, you know, the being a Christian, being a preacher, being a missionary, oh, we should have some kind of prophet on this earth. But Jesus says, no. When we serve the Lord, we are simply unprofitable servant. Unprofitable. I don't know how many times I have been tempted in this world. I want to seek in the glories of this world. I want to enjoy the pleasures in this world. But Jesus was speaking to us. That is not our priority. That's not the thing we should love to. But we should be ready. We should have attitude. Lord, thank you. I am not worthy. I was in the way of destructions. I was sinner. But you have saved me. It is my joy to serve you. And that's all I want. And I believe that is the attitude we should have in our life. So biblical definition of the obedience, I believe, is listen carefully and do accordingly with a humility. And I think that today's text really reflects all those um, requirements. Well, then let us look at the example about this servanthood. And maybe best example I have found in the scripture, of course, is Jesus Christ. But other than Jesus Christ, I found another figure from the book of Joshua. So we're going to take a journey to the book of Joshua, and we're going to see some of the, some of the things on the base of Luke chapter 17, verse 7 to 10. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible says this way, Moses was a servant of the Lord, but Joshua was a minister of Moses. Moses was servant of the Lord, but Joshua was minister of Moses. So Joshua was minister, he was servant of Moses, but the title was not the servant of God. Then when we read the Joshua in chapter 24, verse 39, Joshua 24, verse 29, now Joshua received the title as a servant of God. He finally made it. And I, I, sometimes I feel like I can compare myself with Joshua. He was a man who followed the faith, who, who followed the steps of faith as a successor of Moses. And probably there are a lot of challenges in his life. And, and he did not begin as a servant of God. But in the end, not himself who wrote it, but our God, through the inspiration, his inspiration, the writer of the Bible, put his name as Joshua, the servant of God. I don't know, when we depart from this earth, what kind of title will we or get with? Will we remember as a servant of God? Or will we remember as a servant of mammon, servant of rich, or servant of all kinds of things in this world? In chapter 1, Joshua was military leader. You know, I was, in, I was in military service for two years in Korea. Every Korean man must join the military service. So I, I know how it is like as a, as a soldier. And Joshua was a captain. In chapter 1, as he received the um, position of Moses, if I were him, first task he could do was sharpening the sword or preparing for war. And when God spoke to Joshua, probably Joshua expected some kind of instruction for the battle which may, uh, which, which could come up um, in few days. But when God spoke to Joshua, he did not talk about what to prepare for battle. But in Joshua chapter 1, verse 7, Bible said this way, God spoke this way, Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. Right? That means God was asking to Joshua, remember, keep in your heart all the words of God, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it, turn not from the word of God, to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of law shall not depart he should remain in his heart, right? Depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate, think over and over again, there in day and night, that thou mayst observe to do according to all that is written therein. 
for then thou shalt make thy ways prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. It is very different compared to the many people doing in this world. Because people in this world saying that this is a method you should follow. But when God spoke to Joshua, He said, this is the things you should follow. And this is the word of God. When you follow the word of God, this is the way you are going to go through. God didn't say, you know, you will have easier life. But He promised success when Joshua listened to the voice of his master. And when before Joshua died, he also said the same thing to his people. Joshua chapter 23, verse 6, Bible says, Be ye therefore very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that ye turn not aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left. Joshua has experienced many things in his life, and before he died, he wanted, he wanted to make sure, he wanted to make sure that Israel may know some fact, some truth about his life, and that's what Joshua says. Remember Israel, you must be courageous and to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses. Joshua was saying that you listen the word of God and you do the word of God. And that is my last words for you. My people listen. I don't know what kind of the last words you will you speak in your life before you die. I hope before I die, I tell my children, say, listen to the word of God and do the word of God. And it is the way of the man should do on this earth. Many times, listening to the word of God is not very practical. Sometimes it's not easy to accept what the Bible says. Even today, when I speak to some young people today, they like to talk about computer, they like to talk about TV, they like to talk about sport, they like to talk about entertainment, and the maybe elder generation, they like to talk about politics. And I'm not saying, you know, I don't talk about that as well. But when we decide to talk about Jesus, some people just run away from it. People do not talk, about, they don't like to talk about Jesus. They don't like to listen about the Word of God. And it, is, it will get more harder, it will be harder and harder to preach the Word of God and to listen the Word of God. But interestingly, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 3, the Bible says, Blessed are those who preach the Word of God, who listen the Word of God, and who keep the Word of God. In this world, we have to realize that we, have, we, we should spend our time with the word of God. And what, what, what happened to Joshua? When he heard the word of God, and when he exercised the word of God, we know the rest of the story. He experienced the victories of the time. And I believe that was the secret ingredients of Joshua's victory and Joshua's testimony. He listened to the word of God. Not only that, Joshua obeyed the word of God. Joshua walked according to the mess, his master. Okay, you know, when Joshua had the first task, right? Actually, the first task he had was crossing the river Jordan. And, and the task was not easy for him because now he became the, the successor of Moses. And it was his first task, right? Moses was a great, great leader. And many people probably expected the same thing from Joshua. Probably they, they may expect many miracles or many works like Moses has done. And now Joshua was standing before the river. Then God asked Joshua, cross the river. And God did not instruct the same way how Israelites crossed the Red Sea. This time, God asked Joshua to send the priest with the ark into the river Jordan. Something different. What do you think? If you are Joshua, do you think you can actually send your priest to, to the river? Probably, you know, you, we could think many other methods to crossing the river. And probably Joshua, I don't know, but maybe Joshua may have thought about, what if nothing happened? Nothing would happen. But Bible says, Joshua simply obeyed the word of God. And he actually, we know the story, how river of Jordan has stopped. And so that people could cross the river. And the Bible says there was a miracle at the spot when Joshua obeyed the word of God. What about the city of Jericho? 
Do you know I am I was a soldier and I haven't heard any kind of story of the battle that people just run away, just walk around the city. And that is not the best tactics. Obviously, it is the only tactic in the whole human history. But God simply asked Joshua, just run, just walk around the city of Jericho. Right? Joshua was an experienced soldier and probably he had thought many different ways to fight. But he yielded his own knowledge. He yielded his own experience. But he simply obeyed God's words. And we know the rest of the story. When, when they walk around the city, we know that the city collapsed. Right? Joshua chapter 6 verse 2 says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. Verse 3, And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. God says, Okay, I will give you all this land, all these kings, but you just walk around. Again, when the word of God is preached to us, sometimes we may say, this is nonsense. It's not practical in today's lives. No. Sometimes people may call us as foolish. Some people say, you know, we don't have a clear mind. Some people may accuse us that we have a narrow minded. But when we obey the word of God, I believe our God is with us. And our, our God is performing His works. That in the end, what can we say? In the end, we can say, our God has done it. I am a missionary, and when I was called to the mission field, I didn't know what God would do in my life. But anyway, there are so many testimonies God, God allowed me to experience on this earth after I commit myself to be a missionary. But most like a marvelous experience I ever had happened right before I decided to go to Kenya in 2005. You know, I have preached many young men in the Sunday school and sometimes in preaching, I told them, you trust God, when you trust God, God would make the way for you. And that was my conviction all the time. But it was time that I, I have to leave Korea to go to Kenya. Then I realized that I had got nothing. I had a $200 every month. And that is all. And that support was coming from a BP Church, Bible Presbyterian Church in Singapore. And that's all I had for almost one year. So I didn't have any money, I mean not much money for, to go to Kenya. And, and many of my friends who are also missionary, they told me, Evan, you are doing wrong. Are you are, and, and I asked them, why? And they told me, you have family, you have children, and you must you must do what, what, what every possible you could do. And they told me I was doing very wrong. And they, they were continually asking me to raise the support before I go to Kenya. So I struggled. I told everybody, when God calls, you know, money is not really matter. Other things are not really matter. Just believe and go. And I, I thought that was the you know, principle the scripture is to, telling us. But when everybody is speaking to me on um, what I'm doing was wrong, I realized that I thought I was doing wrong. So I went to Reverend Mark Kim, who is another missionary from um, our mission board, IBPFM. And I talked with him, with my other friends, and I asked him, Reverend Kim, let me spend two more years. Let me spend the two years to raise my support. So when I have enough support, let me go to Kenya so that um, I may serve the Lord uh, with the old, old preparation. The Reverend Kim suggested me, or oh, do you think you can raise enough support when you visit the churches in two years? They challenged me again. So I went to pray again. I, I prayed to God again and again. Oh, and my parents came up to me and said, Eben, are you sure God wants you to go there right now? When I look at the reality, no, not really. Because I was not ready. My I didn't have enough support, and I don't know whether I was ready mentally or emotionally, but I knew there were needs in the mission field. So I told my parents, I don't know, but let me just, let me just trust God. And if God, you know, causes me more problem, then I will just leave Kenya, then I may return to Korea again. Then, then I actually, I went to Kenya, 
in, in 29th of June 2005. And here I am standing before you, and not because I have done so many walks, but I have to tell you that God has provided me all the needs last 10 years. There's no single meal we had to skip due to the lack of money or lack of the finance. And there's not many times we had too much problem with the health, which was a major issue out here today. And all the things we, the Lord has done are marvelous. When I returned in Korea sometimes later, those friends who told me I was not doing the right thing, we had a, like a small fellowship. Then they told me, how did you survive? I just told them, I don't know. One thing I could say was that if I visit many different churches and seeking for support, and if I had enough support and went to Kenya, maybe later on I would say, I'm the one who have raised the money for my support, and I have done so many things. But since I didn't do anything, I mean, of course, I just served the Lord in the mission field, and since it is God who has provided, what I can say is glorify my God who has sustained our lives in the mission field. And I, I'm so thrilled to share with you this one, not because you know I am a great person, but I can really share with you because I have seen the hand of God as God has promised to His servant Joshua. And that testimony is within my life as well. So I will thank God and I really glorify my God how He has provided all the needs. Then Joshua was also unprofitable. You know, Joshua was the most powerful leader in their society. If he could, he could claim to be a king in, the, in Israel. He could be the, you know, he could claim all the good lands. He could claim all the benefits as a leader for many years. And everybody wants to be the leader. Everybody wants to be a king. Everybody wants to be a president or minister or senator. Everybody wants to be a CEO. Nobody wants to be the ser simple servant. But look at Joshua. He decided to serve the Lord continually. You know, Joshua thought serving the Lord as privilege, not as some kind of, of title of his life. So the Bible says in his life, he and his family decide to continue the works of the Lord. In Joshua chapter 19, verse 50, the Bible says, According to the word of the Lord, they gave him the city which he asked, even Timaret Sarah in the Mount Ephraim, and he built the city and dwelt therein. How old was he? I don't know, but probably he was about 100 years old. Right? Again, he could claim the kingship, but he did not claim the kingship. So he decided to go back to the place where God asked him to do. And the Bible, actually some of the archaeologists is telling us this place, um, Timaret Sarah, is not the plain area. It is a mountain area with a lot of rocks. That means it's not an easy place. It's not the best. It was not the best place to cultivate the land. But Joshua chose the place which was not easy to cultivate with. He chose the hardest part in the land of promise and he built a city and he began to serve the Lord as he fulfilled the commandment of the Lord in his last day. He could enjoy with his grandchildren. He could enjoy with all the fame and glories he had. But until last moment of his life, he served the Lord. And he considered this as a privilege to serve the Lord with his humility. That's why in chapter 24, verse 29, And it came to pass after these things that Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being 110 years old. Servant of the Lord, the title is not only given to those young people out there, but it is given for those, whether you are old or not, whether you are young or not, whether you have a lot of education or not, or whether you have a lot of ability or not. It does not matter. When you believe Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and as you call our God as your Master, you know, we should serve the Lord all the days of our life. I shared with you yesterday, why am I in Kenya? Why do I love to be in Kenya? Do I like African people that much? Well, I love Korean, by the way, I'm Korean, right? 
I love Americans and I love Kenyan as well. But it does not mean I love Kenya more than any other people. Well, do I love Mount Kilimanjaro out there? Do I enjoy it with the elephant and giraffe in the, in the mountain? Maybe I do, but that is not why I'm there. I am there because God has called me to be. And that's why I love to serve the Lord. But on the other side, I am there because, you know, God decided to use the person like me. I'm not that great person. I'm not that smart. I'm not that nice looking as well. But it is joy to serve the Lord. Joy to serve the Lord with what I have. And it is great joy. One thing I have experienced sometimes when I return to Korea or when I visit America, whenever I meet people, many are coming to me and says, Oh, Pastor Eben, you know, you are doing a great job. And people like to praise me for as being a missionary out there. But let me just tell you, you know, I'm not here to be recognized. I'm not here so that I may be recognized by you. I'm not here so that you may understand some of the works I have done it. I'm not here so that I may receive the praises from you. But simply, I am there. And I'm here today because it is God who has led me. And I think this is a great blessing for me to tell other people. Many people say, yes, I know God is there. But how does God work in your life? And it is my testimony that, that as being a, being a believer, it is my testimony that the Lord has done much works. You know, my name is Eben. My sister's name is Ezer. So our family name is Ebenezer. When, when my senior pastor from Glory Church in Korea, when he named me, right, he said, oh, you will have probably the daughter. To, and he spoke to my father and says, you will have, you would have a daughter and name her as Ezer. Right? And somehow the Lord really fulfilled that word. So my sister, I mean, you know, of course, obviously she's a girl. Um, and, and the name as a, which is feminine somehow suit her name. And when, we, when I was young, I hated my name because my name in Korea, it sounds very funny. Maybe in English it's very okay. But Eben in Korea is not a common name. And it, it gives many false impression and many, like many different nicknames because, you know, it's not a common name. So I hated my name when I was young. Then as I grow up, you know, my father has uh, many different surgery, many of operation, and he almost died for the tuberculosis, and also he he almost get died for cancer. But every time God raised him, God preserved him, so he could preach. He retired two years ago, uh, when he reached seventy. But until seventy, he and even today he's still preaching right now. And after all these years, now I love have to have my name. Because wherever I go, I can say, it's not we who have done many things, but it is the God of Ebenezer who has led us this much. And that's how I can say before you today, it is God who has done. Like Joshua, we are living in this world. Today, the living in this kind of today's world is not easy. There are so many temptations out there that people who may not understand us more than people who understand us. There are people who hate the Word of God. There are people who like to twist the Word of God. And living in this world as the servant of the Lord is not easy. But let us remember the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus simply say, you know, we should listen to the voice of our Master. Although things are not easy, especially with other people in this society, let us spend more time with the Word of God. Let us listen His voice so that we may understand about His great plan in our life. Not only that, let us go out there, preach the Word of God, let us share the Word of God, and let them, let other people know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior as well. And not only that, let us act as a believer. There are so many Christians out there today, namely Christians. They say they are Christians, but they do all kinds of things, evil things out there. And that is why Christianity it has been decayed so much. Because Christians are living, are not living according to what they are saying and what they are believing. So for us, although our number may not be that great, but from where we are, let us exercise the Word of God so that we may live and we may teach and we may reflect the Word of God. Let people see 
Jesus Christ throughout our life. Let people believe Jesus Christ as they observe, as they enjoy the testimony we may establish on this earth. And let us have proper understanding about unprofitable servant. Whenever, whatever we do, and whenever, wherever we will be, let us remember that it is our privilege to serve the Lord. We are not seeking the things from this world, but we are seeking the things from above. Let us remember it is God who has called you. You are sinner. You are worthless. I was sinner. I was worthless. We do not deserve this grace and this love. But God has called us. Let us be an unprofitable servant with the hum- with the humility, with the joy, with the happiness. Let us serve the Lord until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, once again we thank Thee for this time of meditation. Father, we thank Thee again how You have saved us. Father, we were on the way to hell. We are on the way to destruction. But You decide to save us. Father, we are also thankful how You have called us to be Your servant. How You have gathered us, especially in this sanctuary, to worship You. As we come to Your presence, Father, may You bless our heart. May You strengthen us. May You challenge us. May You help us, Father, so that we may have stand, stand strong with our faith, with our testimony on your, on your word. Father, things are very difficult. Things are getting wicked. And people love sins. And it is more difficult to live according to your word. But Father, you are God who gives the temptation which we can endure in our faith. So Father, continually guide us and lead us. So that one life we have on this earth, we may have much testimony before you and before others. And also, Father, may you keep us, may you preserve us until the last moment of our life, so that when we stand before you, you may call us as a faithful servant. Also, Father, give us the heart of humility in our life, so that whatever we do, we may not boast what we have done, but we may glorify, we may honor the Master who have given us such a job on this earth. Father, we believe our time is not yet come. As we have so many tasks on this earth, so many mission fields out there, so many people are dying without knowing Jesus Christ. May you help us, Father, so that we may continue our task on this earth. We are once again, we are thankful for this privilege to meditate your holy words. Continually bless our heart so that we may have joy in our meditation with you. We pray all this thing in Jesus' name. Amen. We're not just serving.